Welcome back to Coach's Corner with Aiden Nahuja and Spencer Barber. Today we're here with Coach Chef for the Harvard Westlake Equestrian Program. The team is entering the start of their season as they had their first show on October 30th. And before we get started, could you please give us like your experience with the sport, how long you've been coaching at Harvard Westlake, and just the general background of the program? Sure. So uh, I myself have been riding since I was four, and I still ride. Um, in terms of coaching, I started coaching after I graduated from college. I actually started with swimming. So I was helping Darlene Bible over at the middle school, um, actually doing uh, high school practices, but middle school morning practices. Um, and that was in 1998, maybe I started, or 99. Um, and I, a year or two later, they asked me to start um, working with the equestrian team. Uh, because I think it's a sport where not a lot of people have knowledge. And so they knew that I rode both here um, when I was in high school and I rode for college as well. Um, and so it, they asked me to do that. And so I've been doing that, I guess, for more than 20 years. <laughs> so a long time. Yeah. Um, and while we were scheduling this, we had a lot of conflicts in terms of because you have another job at UCLA as a doctor. How do you deal with working at Harvard Westlake as a coach and also working at UCLA at the same time? So uh, that was one of the reasons that I had to give up swimming as um, a, in helping out with that team because the practices were, uh, you know, every day here and it required oftentimes a half day for um, swim, uh, swim meets um, and sometimes we had more than one meet in a week. Um, and so that kind of time commitment was not something that I could do anymore, whereas the equestrian team has a much more flexible schedule. So I'm able to help out with the equestrian team still, um, which... It makes me really happy. I like to be involved with the school as a, as an alum. Great. And as a follow up, tell us about the job at UCLA. Um, following up on Aiden's question, can you tell us more about what you do at UCLA? Sure. Uh, so I'm a pediatric neurologist, and I actually have specialty training in sports neurology. Um, and so after my residency in peds neurology, I did a couple extra years to learn about sports. Uh, sports concussion, um, traumatic brain injury, um, so specifically how those things relate to athletes um, and how athletes who have neurologic disorders such as migraine or seizures can continue to participate in their sports. So those are all the things that I do at UCLA. I'm the associate director of the UCLA Steve Tisch Brain Sport Program. Um, and so we see athletes in our program. We do community work. So we do outreach. Um, and it's one of it's something that I really love to do. I love to be able to balance kind of what my professional interest is, which is I love taking care of people and especially the adolescent population is my favorite. Um, and I love be, being able to combine that with my personal interest in sports. Um, I myself was a, am an athlete. I ride. Um, but I also love taking care of athletes and, and talking about sports with them when I'm in, in the clinic. And, like, how does that um, sports neurology experience translate over to being a coach? You know, I think about uh, being a doctor as being uh, an educator. So a lot of times when I'm in the clinic, especially with my adolescents, we're trying to come up with a plan together. I'm trying to help them see, you know, either about, let's say I have a kid with a migraine, and I'm trying to educate them about their migraine and about how often they have headaches you know, how, how we should treat them with preventive medication or with medications that stop the headache. And so there's a lot of teaching that goes on there or even coaching because I'm trying to coach them to be able to live a better, have a better experience, you know, whether it is participating in sports with their migraines or being able to go to school and deal with a lot of challenging schoolwork as a junior <laughs> and being stressed. So I think there's some coaching element there to being a doctor, especially with that population. And then, you know, that, uh, that obviously is this very similar to what we do as coaches, is that we're trying to encourage our players or our athletes to perform well. It's not very dissimilar than, than what I do in the office. Coach, obviously there's no space at Harvard Westlake on campus for you to practice. So I was just curious to know as where do you guys practice? Uh, 
Oh, yeah. So um, I guess I didn't finish answering Aiden's question. Sorry. Um, so in terms of the program, it's always been an off-campus sport. And the way the equestrian team works is that um, the riders will have their own horses and trainers or access to their own horse. And so they practice with their trainers wherever their facility is. So, for example, right now we have three riders. We're a small team this year, and they're kind of all over um, the Los Angeles area in terms of where their trainers might be. And so they practice anywhere between, you know, as little as maybe one time per week, but some of them will practice every day uh, ride, riding their horses and taking care of their animals. And then we have four shows per year. And so we get together for those shows. And in the past, we've done community service activities to do team building and we have meetings and, um, just kind of fun social hangouts. It just depends on the makeup of the team. I leave it up to the captains what they want to do. And you mentioned you guys have three players this year. Um, what's like the normal amount like that you would estimate? We're pretty small. I, we have typically anywhere between like a few. I think this is on the smaller end for us, and we've had up to 12 um, on the team competing before. And um, And because of that, like how do you deal with recruiting and like getting new riders? So we don't do any recru recruiting. Um, I just, whoever is here at the school and wants to ride and has access to horses and lessons with their trainer, um, we let them join the team. So obviously it's not a, <laughs> a cut sport like yeah. some of the other sports are. Um, we're very welcoming. And I know that oftentimes the riders have other things that they do, as many Harvard Westlake students do, I know because I went here and I've been coaching a long time, so I know that every every Harvard Westlake student has many activities that they could be potentially involved in, in addition to their academic load. So I don't, I'm not too demanding on the riders. So, um, Coach, I was interested in knowing, like, how does a rider get like assigned a horse? Oh, so they come with their own oh. horse. So it's different in college than it is in high school. So in high school, you have to have access to your own horse. So um, that means that your trainer either lets you borrow a horse or you own a horse and you bring that horse to the show and you compete on that horse. The way when I went to college, the way it is, um, and for both the NCAA and club sport athletes in college, you get a horse assigned to you. It's like a lottery. Um, on the day of the show, so you don't have any opportunity to practice on that horse, um, and then you go to that collegiate show and you compete on that horse you've never ridden. And um, just in general, like how much of the sport do you think is dependent on the rider or the horse itself? That's a great question. So I think it's really important that you have a good relationship with your horse. So a very good rider can build a, a relationship quickly with a the horse. They can assess what the horse um, kind of feels like needs in terms of kind of cues for going around the ring and jumping over fences. Um, but at the beginner levels, you want a horse to do more of the work because the rider isn't as experienced. So you want a really experienced horse that can help the rider kind of navigate the challenges that there might be in the ring for them. Um, Coach, are the riders responsible for like caring for their own horses? And if so, like what comes with that responsibility? So many riders do um, care for their own horses. And so that means that, you know, and it can be any level of, of care. So sometimes at barns, uh, you're responsible for your own horse or your horse might be in your backyard. So growing up, I had my own horse in my backyard. So I was responsible for feeding my horse twice a day and making sure I cleaned up after my horse. Now, of course, when I was younger, my parents helped me a lot, specifically my dad. Um, and I still have a horse at home, and that means... Uh, at my parents' house five minutes away. So that means I go there uh, every day and feed him and make sure he's, you know, taken care of. You want to groom your horse every day, so brush them and so that they, you know, get their itchies out. Um, but there are also, uh, so that's kind of like the higher level of care that you might do. Um, but there are also barns where, you know, especially for a busy rider. So I have another horse and he's at my trainer's barn and he's in full service. So that means that when I get there, he's already tacked up and ready to go. I can just get on him and I can go ride. And uh, there are grooms there that take care of the horse. And so I think our riders have um, on our team have always had kind of a variety of levels of care that they provide. Um, so we've had riders before that provide that have similar to I did um, have their horses at home. They provide all the care for their horses. And we do have riders that um, have their horses in full service barns. 
And um, like, what does a typical practice and show look like for, for the equestrian program? So the practices are all really different. We have a few different types of riding that we have at the show. So, um, for example, our captain, Cosette Shamanki, she does dressage. And so her practice might look like kind of going through dressage is like a, a type of riding um, that looks like ballet on horseback. You're actually asking the horse to do a lot of precision movements um, and showing that the horse can really listen to the rider and do exactly what you're asking the horse to do at the time. Um, so Cosette might be practicing some of those specific moves. Um, but we have two jumper riders right now. We have Savannah Strom and Sahana Gupta. And both of them show in the jumpers. And that means that at their lessons, they do a little bit of flat work, meaning walk, trot, canter in a circle. And they might do a little bit of um, kind of more advanced work. Um, but then they do some jumping during their lesson. So those are what their lessons probably look like. And then when we come to the show, um, there's jumpers, dressage, uh, hunters, equitation. So there are a few different kind of categories that you can ride in. Um, and so you might ride in one specific category like Cosette does or like Savannah and Sahana do. Or you might show in a few different categories if your horse is very, ver you and your horse are very versatile. And because you said that, like you guys practice in multiple different locations, how do you manage to like be able to coach everyone at different times and be at their lessons and practices? So I don't go to their oh. lessons and practices. They have their lessons and practices with their own trainer. Um, and I just meet them at their show. I'm, I'm like a figurehead. <laughs> <laughs> um, I go and I, I'm supportive, but I don't actually coach them. So that's different than when I w was helping with swimming. I would be here and I'd be on the pool deck and I'd try to help them with stroke technique or giving them kind of instructions. It was much more involved, but because of my job, I couldn't continue to do the swimming. Um, and equestrian team is much more low key for me um, as it is for our riders. You know, they get to kind of make their own schedule. It's a lot more flexible. Um, coach, every year you have the challenge of your seniors graduating and losing your leaders. And I'd imagine even more so with a smaller team like equestrian. So who would you say has really like stepped up this year as a leader and filled that role? Well, we only have the three and Cosette is our, our senior captain. And actually what I've done in the past is I've always had a junior start, you know, fulfilling some of that captain role. Um, and so Savannah is working on that with uh, Cosette this year. So she'll do, she'll have some of the responsibilities of getting, you know, people excited for shows or sticking around and watching. It depends on the size of the program too. So with the three, um, it's a little bit just, you know, we all kind of hang out, see each other at the show. Um, but when we have a bigger team, we try to generate a little bit more enthusiasm and make sure that everybody there, it feels like a little bit more, a little bit more cohesive. And what would you say, like, you emphasize the most when coaching? Like, at these shows, like, what do you emphasize to your riders, either, like, with technique or even just as, like, a mentality thing? Well, so I try to be supportive in terms of, like, just providing encouragement. Um, they have trainers there um, that do the kind of technique piece. Um, you know, if I were ever step it needed to step up and do that, I could. I've, I've taught in the past. Um, but that isn't my typical thing. Like, that's not my, my job isn't, isn't as a coach. Um, it's, you know, just as the, um, just as the team representative, basically. And I'm, I'm the adult responsible at the shows. Um, so I'll be encouraging, but I, I won't ever kind of comment specifically on their ride. Um, I know you just said you don't really comment specifically on, like, what they can improve on, but... Did you see any strengths and or weaknesses at your first show? Oh, I think everybody um, kind of rode well. I think, uh, you know, there are always things that you can improve on. Um, you know, sometimes there might be like a little blip. So um, riding is a little bit of a performance sport. And there's so there's some subjectivity and then there's some objectivity. So in some of the um, pieces, in some of the classes, there's a judge that is going to tell you whether you achieved the goal to perfection, essentially. Um, and so you get graded, you know, for example, in dressage, which is what Cosette does, you get graded on those particular movements and whether you're precise. And so there's always a way to be more precise, I think, um, and make everything look a little bit better. 
which is one of the things I like about riding as a sport is there's always this opportunity to improve with your horse. And even though we think of it as an individual sport, as opposed to something like basketball or soccer where you have teammates, in fact, riding is a team sport, right? You have your horse. You want to improve that relationship. You want to make sure that they're always listening. Um, so, you know, that's something that you can continue to work on when you're um, in your practice. Uh, and then in terms of like objective things, there are always opportunities. So in the jumpers, which is what Savannah and um, Sahana do, they uh, it's against the clock. So it's a timed um, event. And then they also want to make sure that your horse is always jumping over the fence and not knocking anything down. And so there are always opportunities there to make it a little bit better. You want to get a little bit faster or get closer to the optimum time in the jumpers. And um, just one final question. Like, what do you... Um like, where are these shows that, that occur? Like, are they in different places? And, like, if for someone who goes to Harvard West, like, where can they view these shows? So for many years now, they've been at the Hanson Dam Horse Park, which is in Lakeview Terrace. So if you take the 405 up to the 118 to the 210, it's up in the kind of northeast end of the valley. Um, and we have those short shows four times per year. Um, and I would encourage anybody who's interested to come out and, and take a look. Um, I'm always happy to answer questions by email about timing because the riders have very spe specific times that they go. And rather than be there all day with the, you know, all the riders, you know, sometimes it's nice to know when, when the kids are going so you can watch your specific favorite rider. Thanks for tuning in with us here on Coach's Corner with Coach Che. Good luck to the equestrian team for their upcoming season. I'm Spencer Barber along with Aiden Ahuja. We'll see you next time on Coach's Corner. Go Wolverines!